Hi everyone, my name is Katie Wartichuk. I work for Washtenaw County Water Resources Commissioner's Office in the Rain Garden Program. And I'm gonna teach you today how to design your own rain garden. This is something that I do pretty often when I want to plant a new garden or replant an older garden. And if you like this kind of work, um, know that there are jobs out there, landscape architects and landscape designers will use the same kind of method to do garden designs. So today you'll create a garden design that is to scale using graph paper. You'll select plants for the site and also draw them to scale. And then you'll have to probably adjust your design and maybe your plant list so that it makes sense in the real world. So what is a rain garden? Um, a rain garden will slow, spread, and soak in stormwater. And by doing that, they're cleaning up polluted stormwater. And because they're full of native plants, they also are a great wildlife habitat. So you can see in this picture that the garden is sunk down a little bit. It has this sort of saucer sunken down shape. That's so that it can hold stormwater and then allow that stormwater to slowly soak down into the ground. And when water goes through the ground, it naturally becomes filtered clean because there's little microorganisms in the soil. It's so cool. Um, those microorganisms will clean up dirty water and send the clean water on its way out into our rivers. So often what happens when it rains, all that rain will run off from roads and parking lots and it will pick up pollution on its way. So imagine there's a little bit of oil or maybe there's trash or leaves on the road, well, the rain will pick that all up and go into a storm drain. And in our area, all of those storm drains go directly to the river and it's unfiltered. So that water never gets filtered clean. And it's a big problem. Um, it brings a lot of dirty water into our rivers. So what we're trying to do at the Water Resources Office is direct more of our rain runoff into rain gardens. And that allows the dirty stormwater to be filtered clean in a natural way by these little gardens. So you can see this is a rain garden on Stone School Road, and it's capturing all of the water um, on the stretch of the road that lands on it. All that dirty water goes into the rain garden and it ends up getting filtered clean. So that's um, the background on what a rain garden is. Now let's get into the design. So before you even sit down with paper and pencil to draw up your design, you want to go and look at your site. And while you're looking at the site where you want a rain garden, you want to look at a couple things. First, the sunlight. Second, the location, where exactly it is and what's around it. And then third, think about your bloom times that you might want to see in your garden. So let's first talk about sunlight. Um, if you have full sun, so there's no buildings or trees nearby, then you can choose certain plants like purple coneflower. You can see on the left side of this um, slide, all these beautiful purple coneflowers. They would not do well if this was a shady site. They need full sun. Cardinal flower, this red plant on the right side, this plant likes part sun. So if you have a site that has maybe one tree nearby, so you get some shade, and some sun, then you could choose a plant like cardinal flower. So plants um, need a certain amount of sunlight. Second, think about your location. So I'll give you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about here. First at Ipsy Community High School by the soccer fields, we built a rain garden um, last year. And when we were designing it, a student did this design and they decided to have short, neat looking plants because a lot of people come walking down this pathway to look to watch the soccer games and we didn't want something tall or messy or something that you couldn't see past. So they chose fox sedge, this really short plant and lots of irises. So it looks really neat and tidy and you can easily see over it. Another example is this rain garden at Estabrook Elementary School, which is located in a parking lot. So we wanted to make sure that any cars driving by would be able to see past the rain garden. So we chose a really low growing wild strawberry all along the edges of the garden. So think about what the surrounding landscape is like. Could you get away with having a really tall wild prairie or would it be better to have a short neat looking garden? 
Now think about your bloom time. And this is pretty simple. Usually you want something always blooming in your garden. So make sure you have a plant that blooms in the spring, another plant species that blooms in the summer, and then another one that blooms in the fall. Then you'll always have something that the wildlife, the birds and the bees and the butterflies can enjoy. And anybody passing by also will always see a garden that has some color in it. All right, I'm going to show you a few examples of designs that I've done. This is one for Ipsy District Library out on Whitaker Road. And before I start drawing up my design, I look at an aerial map. So this is just an image of above. So if you were, imagine you were a bird flying over the parking lot here, over the building. This is actually a vegetable garden. This is what you would see. And I talked to um, the people in the library and we decided this would be a good spot for a rain garden because um, it will capture all this water. You can see water flowing in blue lines. Um, it will capture that water and it's also pretty close to the building so they still can water. So, all right, I have my site selected. I know where I'm gonna put it. Now I can start drawing my rain garden. And here is um, the outline of the garden. Again, it's, it's a bird's eye view. So it's like we're flying overhead, like we're a bird. And each one of these circles within my rain garden shape is a plant. And each of the plant species, so the type of plants is its own color. So all of these green circles, if you look over here on my key, all the green circles are fox sedge. All the blue circles are blue flag iris. Purple is nodding wild onion. So now anybody could take this design and see, all right, this is where I'm gonna plant all of my fox sedges. This is where I'll plant all of my blue flag iris. And then they also can look in my key and see how many plants we need of each of those species. So that gives you an idea of what goes into a design. Here's another example of a smaller, um, a smaller design. This is at a preschool in Ann Arbor. It's only 100 square feet, so not a lot of plants. And what I want you to notice is that some of these plants, like this horse mint and also the fox sedge, these are a little bit bigger than my other species. So some plants are bigger, so they need more sunlight and more room. They need more nutrients um, and water from the soil. So you'll draw them as a bigger circle. Other plants that just are smaller, they'll be a smaller circle. So I'll show you how to do that. All right, so step one, choose your plants. Think about all those things that you looked at at your site. Think about the sunlight, the location, and the bloom times. And you will be given this uh, recommended native plant sheet and you can look through all of these different plant options. And then I usually will circle the ones that I want to include. So make sure that if your site is full shade that you're only choosing plants that do well in the shade. And it will say that right below the picture. Um, if you choose a couple plants that bloom in the spring, then maybe choose one that blooms in the summer and one that, that blooms in the fall so that you do have something always blooming in your garden. And then I'll, also in this description underneath the picture, it says how tall the plant is. So think about if you want some tall plants or maybe you want all short plants, that's up to you. Step two, make a list of all of your plants and then assign a color to each plant. So you'll be given a Google slide that has um, this plant list template and you will enter in each of your plant species that you wanna plant and then assign a color. So change these um, gray circles into whatever color you want. So each species has its own color. Make sure that you have at least five different species. Um, oftentimes one plant for whatever reason just doesn't do well. And if you had only planted say two plants then half of your garden is gonna be gone. So make sure to have at least five plants. Then if one doesn't do well, that's okay. You still have quite a few other plants. You can do more than five species. Now, step three, figure out how big each of your plants should be. So again, look at this recommended native plants page. And there's a guide on the left side that shows how big you should make each of your circles 
Again, remember each circle is a plant. So all of these plants on the top row are small. They're only about one foot tall. So they only need one foot in between them. So this on center measurement, this is what landscape designers and landscape architects use. What it means is from the very center of one plant to the center of the next plant, you should have one foot. And you'll use your graph paper on your design page to make sure that you have one foot in between each of your plant centers. So on the graph paper, each of these squares is one foot. Now, a really easy way to do this is draw a circle and just use this native plant guide to make sure that your circle is the right size. <laughs> um, and if you look at it, you can see these one foot on center plants are about one square in your graph paper. So that will give you a guide too. Now, if you have a bigger plant, um, like this second row, these are about two or maybe three feet tall. So they need two feet in between the centers. So they're two feet on center. So you can see it now I have one, two feet in between the centers of these two plants. And when you draw the circle, it will take up almost four squares of your graph paper. So what I do is I, um, I take my circles that are the right color for each of my species and I just copy and paste, and then I draw them to be the right size. And then I just copy and paste those plants that are now the right size to put into my, my design. So you'll want to now decide where you want each of those plants to go within the garden. So I'm gonna give you this template so that um, you already have a outline of your rain garden and you can see the surrounding area. So you have two trees on either side and for our site we actually have an existing rain garden right next to this new rain garden. So within this new rain garden this is where you're going to fill the whole space in with plants and you can start with whichever one. I started here with wild strawberry and again I just have my circle that's the right color. It's pink and I made it the right size. It's about one of these squares. And then I just copy and paste it, control C, control V on your computer. And I put them where I wanted them in the garden. So because wild strawberry is so short, I wanted it all along the edge of the bottom of my rain garden here. Now, um, when you go to buy plants, nurseries will usually have a minimum order number for each species. So the nursery that we're gonna use, they require that you have at least eight of each species, and then you have to have multiples of eight. So I, for my wild strawberry, I want a lot of them. So maybe I'll have 32. Um, whereas my blue flag iris here, maybe I just want 16 of those. So. You can do as many circles as you want, but it does need to be a multiple of eight. So there's a little bit of math involved in this. So you can see now I've added in my blue flag iris. That's a bigger plant. It, it needs to have two feet between the centers of each of the plants and each circle takes up about four squares. And so once I had it sized correctly, I just copy and pasted it and started filling it in into the garden where I wanted it. And you wanna do that for each of your species. And um, so here I have my wild strawberry, mostly on the bottom, a little bit over here next to this existing tree. Then I have three big patches of my colorful black-eyed Susan. I have a couple scattered patches here of blue flag iris, and then a big band of fox sedge through the center. And then a little bit more color in the back um, with my Canada anemone. I like to plant with big blocks of a single type of plant, but some people like to scatter their plants all throughout the garden. I do often put my taller plants in the center or in the back of my garden design so that if somebody was walking by, they could see all of the plants. Imagine if you had, you know, a six foot tall plant right in the front, then you wouldn't be able to see anything behind it. Um, so where you put the plants, it's really, it's really up to you. Now you want to total up 
the number of plants that you have for each species. So my blue circles here, my blue flag iris, I ended up with 24. Wild strawberry, I have 40. So again, remember, these are the numbers that need to be multiples of eight. And if you end up with one more or one less, <clears throat> or two more or two less, that's fine. It's okay if it's a little bit imprecise. But this will then tell us how many to order from the nursery. So there you have it. You have a rain garden design. Anybody could take this piece of paper and they would know what plant species we want to include in the garden. They would know how many plants we need to buy of each species. And then looking at this design, they know exactly where to put the plants. Um, so I'll often come up with these designs and then I'll hand them to my contractor or sometimes with schools we'll have students plant um, and everybody will be able to follow this design. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed the lesson and I hope that you now can design your own rain garden. Thank you.